All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble. Who's beeping their horn? This HP Pavilion X360 convertible model 14-BA253CL. Right, so first what you want to do is remove all the screws. So let me see if there's any hidden ones. There's one here. Okay, it was underneath this rubber piece. Um, the foot was already missing. I don't know if there's one under here. I'm going to have to check. Let's see here. Okay. So I'll go underneath this rubber piece. All right, we'll remove the other one. Just like that. Let's see if there's one under here. Yes, there's a screw under there as well. Okay. All right, let's see if there's any screws under this. I doubt it. Okay, no screws under these. And then we'll remove the screws on the front. So the front, you have to use a PH0. Um, these other screws are PH1 or JAS1. So this is PH0 or JAS0. Okay, so let's remove these three. The customer said that the screen just stays black, so we're gonna see if the cable connections are loose or anything like that. Go. So now that we got all the six screws out, what we're going to want to do, open this up, all right, and then there's a little gap here, all right, so what you want to do is get your fingernail or pry tool in there, okay, that's what I use, I heard the computer just turn itself on, let's see, yeah, I don't see anything on the screen at all, okay, so we're going to open this thing up, just like this, use your fingernails or pry tools again, and then get between that gap, and then I use my thumbs to push on the back. This cover's stuck pretty strong. I don't know if they got something in there, but it's holding on there really tight. All right, so we're gonna go around, same thing, just go all the way around the laptop and pry the cover up, okay? This one's pretty tough, so you're probably going to want to use some good pry tools. I'm using my fingernails, but I'm probably going to end up destroying all of them. Okay, just like that. Might have to flip this one over, but here you can see now there's a gap here. Might have to flip the 360 part over to make it easier. Let's see if that helps. So I'm going to flip this over, the 360. Okay, and then we can kind of pop this up. I'm going to have to plug this into a monitor and shut it down properly. Um, so let me do that real quick. I'll be back. I'm going to pause this. All right, I'm back, so it should be shutting down. And we're, again, just going to go around and continue popping the cover off. It's going to be hard to film this. Sorry. Oops. How do I turn this off? There we go. Okay. And pop this whole cover off. Okay. Wow, this cover's on there pretty good. Let's see here. I'll flip this back over. See if that helps. Even with all the clips popped up, it's still stuck. It's pretty strange. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Alright. There we go. It's coming up. screws under this random one? Nope. Okay. So I don't know why it's stuck on that side. This side seems to be coming up. Okay, so since this side's coming up, I'm going to go around that side. There we go. And kind of just wiggle it as I kind of pull it. You don't want to use too much force. There are cables underneath that you can damage if you just yank it up really hard. So you want to be careful. Okay. And turn this this way and then try and pry it out let's see if I use the metal tool if that will help so you got this tool you don't want to pull it push it too deep into the computer or you can damage the main board okay so I don't know what's holding on to it it's stuck in there 
stuck in there real good. Let's see. This side is coming up, so it's kind of strange. Alright, come on. Go. A little closer to that edge. I don't know what's holding on to this. Let's see, are there any other screws I'm forgetting? No? Alright, so I guess it's just difficult for some reason. Okay, ow. Yeah, I don't know why this side is so difficult to remove. Okay, got all these clips out except for this one side. It's stuck completely. I guess I have to use more brute force. Hmm. Now it's stuck in there real good. It doesn't want to come out at all. So, I don't know what's going on with that. Very strange. Okay, so if yours is stuck like this, I don't know what you're going to do. It's very, oh, there we go. Okay, that one clip right there in the middle. It was very strong. Sorry, my hair keeps going in the camera. All right, so once you get all of that out, oh, looks like that back corner is still stuck a little, but you want to lift it up slightly, and we have to disconnect all these cables inside. So since this is a 360 model, I can probably do this. There we go, like that. All right, so to remove these, there's little tabs that you need to flip up. So the keyboard, there's a tab here. I just use my fingernail like that, pull that tab up, then you pull the keyboard out. Same thing with the keyboard backlight connector. Flip that tab up, pull that out, and then same with the trackpad connector. This tab, you push it downwards, okay? It goes the other way, and then you can pull this cable out. All right, so there we go. Now we got this piece off. I don't know why that one clip was so strong, but this is it. So you got the model numbers here, product ID, serial number, warranties, keyboard models. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but if you need a keyboard, oops, sorry, that's the information you want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is remove the keyboard, and then I have to check these cable connections. I'm going to take the screen out and then try and pop it apart, but um, I see there's the two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. You can upgrade this to an SSD if you want. Um, then there's this cable for the volume buttons, the hard drive light, and the two and a half inch, uh, or not, what is it called? 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Okay. I just pop this up to disconnect that cable because it's um, holding, it's on the battery. So I'm going to remove both sides because it's actually taped down to the battery. And I don't want to try and just rip that cable out because sometimes you can damage them that way. Alright, so let's take these screws off. Okay, so there's four screws along the top side of the battery. Two that are right next to the connector there. Okay. Let's remove those four. All right, then we got three screws at the bottom. So remove those three. All right, now that we got those screws out, we can pull this out. All right, so what you want to do is get underneath the battery. I used to use these tabs and then you can lift it up just like that. Now we got the battery out. Is there a battery model number here? Okay, so they have the HP replacement part number here, which is uh, 916811-855. So if you want to replace the battery, that's what the model number is that you would search, or the part number, sorry. I don't know if there's a model number, but I would just search the HP part number. All right, so I'll set the battery aside. After you remove the battery, it's always a good idea to press and hold the power button for about um, for about 10 to 15 seconds, but I think this model, the power button was on the keyboard, so we can't really do that. I might have to reconnect the keyboard temporarily just to do that. Let's see here. Wait, where's the power button? Am I 
blind or something. Am I missing something here? Okay, power button's not on the keyboard. Where are you? Usually these models, it's like on the side. Oh, it is on the side. Okay, I did not see it. All right, so the power button's still here. Make sure you leave this cable plug in. Okay, and then press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds again. Make sure this cable's connected, otherwise you can't do that. All right, I'm gonna have to clean the dust out of this thing. I don't see any replace, oh, actually, is that an SSD? Or that's a wireless card actually on the bottom. So I don't know if there's replaceable RAM. I'm not gonna be pulling out the motherboard on this one. I'm just getting to the screen to see if there's something going on with that. So I won't know, but I do see some chips under there. That looks like a M.2 SSD. Um, the wireless card is actually up here. So there's a good chance that the RAM might be upgradable as well, but um, if you wanted to find out, you can search for the motherboard model number. I don't know if it's one of these numbers here. Um, and then you can try and find out if you can find pictures of the other side. All right, anyways, let's remove the two and a half inch SATA hard drive, flip that up. Then you can pull this cable out, okay, just like that. And then this tab is supposed to be to pull it up, but usually it just stretches and doesn't work well. But if you can pull that, you can use that. See, it's just coming out of there. Um, because of that, I use this thin pry tool, and then I just pry up the back of the hard drive like this. Uh-oh, I'm getting a call. All right, and that's how you get the hard drive. So I'm actually going to have to take this call, and I will be back in a bit. I guess I'll have to merge the videos. All right, so I'm back, removed the hard drive. So if you wanted, you can actually change it to an SSD. You can just transfer over this um, rubber piece. You also have to peel off this foil. I don't want to do that because I don't want to mess up their stuff because all I need to do is check their screen. But you can pull this little, there's a adapter under here to get this cable. You'd have to pull that out and put it on the new drive, okay? So hopefully you can figure that out. If you can't, watch my other videos. I show how to remove these adapters on a lot of them. But yeah, okay. So now I'm just going to flip up the tab for the screen cable connector. I'm not going to take out everything. I'm just going to be doing the stuff for the screen connector. Let me see if I can see which one. Okay, so the tab is on this side, on the inside, or I guess the outside. So I'm just going to check, make sure this cable is aligned. Make sure it looks clean. Again, if you're going to remove this connector, you do want to press and hold the power button just to drain any power. I'm just wiping off the pins. A lot of people get annoyed at me for wiping it off that way, but I've had several computers that I work on and fix that way. So I don't think the cable is damaged on this side though. It's more likely it came loose or it got damaged on the other side or the, the screen itself got damaged or possibly even the backlight circuit. But anyways, I don't know why this tape was up like that when I opened it. So Maybe someone opened this and did something to it. All right, so I'm gonna check these connections. That's for the power button. This is, I think for the webcam, got the charge port connector here. Um, it looks like it's underneath the motherboard with this metal uh, thing. So it's kind of bad design. You have to take the whole thing apart, remove the whole motherboard. Maybe I should just remove the whole motherboard and check underneath. Um, no, I don't want to do that. There's too many screws and stuff under there. If I have to take out the hinge for some reason, then I'll do that, but I don't think I will. Okay. It's too, adds a little bit too much risk involved. The customer right now, their computer turns on and works with an external monitor. I don't want to make it to where it doesn't turn on at all. And then they're going to complain and say, I owe them a new one. But anyways, so we're going to try and pop out the screen here. So I'm just going to get my fingernails in the gap. All right. Hopefully you can see just in there. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other. Push on the back with my nails and pull with, or push on the back with my thumb and then push with my nails. All right. And then I'm just going to go all the way around here. Okay, so here you can see the screen is popping out. That's what we want. 
Got to go all the way around. Sorry, I know it's not going in view properly, but it's hard to do this and keep it in frame. But hopefully you get the idea. And make sure you be careful with the motherboard here. You don't want to short it out or get some static and damage it. So I have this kind of anti-static foamy thing that I've been that I get from packages, and I just use that. Okay. So you're just going around. All right. Pop the screen out. Just like this. All right. Go around. Screen is mostly out. We just need to get the bottom half. Okay, we got all the top pieces out. All right, there we go. Once you get all of the top out, it looks like you can slide it forward. There's a clip that's stuck down here. Okay, there we go. Oh, there's also adhesive holding it. Felt like there was adhesive holding it, but I don't see adhesive under there. All right, once you get the top out like this, then you should be able to kind of pull it forward some. Here you can see it's coming out, okay? And here you can see this whole plastic piece goes underneath. So you do have to slide it forward like that, all right? And then be careful because this cable underneath is short. So I'm gonna flip this back over like that, okay? And then I'm gonna use this um, the laptop design to let it fold forward like that slightly. And then I'm going to lift this up. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I need to put something under here so I can show you. So I'll put this box, I guess. Hopefully that will stay up. There we go. All right, and then what I'm going to do, these are the touchscreen controllers. Then you got this cable that goes for the touchscreen. And then we're going to be peeling this one up because this is for the LCD. We're also going to check the screen model number, so that way if we need to replace it, we can. Okay, so just peel up this. Okay, and then once you peel this all up, oh, there's the clear adhesive as well. Oh, man. Okay, so you need to peel up that one as well. This adhesive is really stuck on there. So you just gotta peel it off. Okay. Be careful not to put too much pressure on the back of the panel or you can damage it. All right, so we got all of that up. You can stick the clear one back on to the other one. Actually, don't do that. Okay, so this one, the cable, you just pull it straight out. I use the plastic tab to do that. There we go, it comes out. And then you just line it back up. I'm going to pull it back in because the screen wasn't lighting up. So if we're lucky, it was just a loose connection. And redoing the connection might fix that problem. Okay, I might have to do this out of frame of the camera because it's hard to see what I'm doing while the camera's over my head. So I need to peel off this clear one again. tab to try and pull it forward more all right then we'll put that back down and hopefully we're lucky all right hopefully that was the only issue and it's not the screen or something else the screen model here you can see n140hce-eba revision c1 usually the revision's not as important okay so we got all of that now we're going to put this back together just flip the screen back up. Okay. Oh, it's getting caught underneath this piece. So get the screen, flip it back over. Okay. Again, you want to put the bottom piece in first. You have to slide that down. Okay. Kind of do that at an angle. Slide that corner in. All right. Make sure you got both edges in and then you can snap this back in. What I'm going to do first though is I'm going to put the battery back and then I'm going to try and power it on just to see 
If it's going to start up, I'm going to leave the keyboard and trackpad and everything disconnected for now. All right, so we're just going to put back this. I'm not even going to put back the hard drive. Actually, I do have to put back the hard drive because they're using an SSD for the boot, I think. So I don't want to, if I leave that disconnected, it might mess up the boot. Okay, so I'll put these back in. Make sure you reconnect these. Okay. If you're wondering, um, the battery, you don't have to remove that when you're taking out the hard drive. Okay, so there we go. We're going to put the hard drive back in, put that connector in there, there we go, put that latch down, drop the hard drive back in place, it has those little rubber tabs, make sure they go in as well. I'm kind of pulling the plastic back so I can get those rubber tabs in properly, there we go. Alright, let's see if it powers on, power is on, I do see the light, but the screen at least so far, it looks like it's not doing anything. So I guess that didn't work. So they must, oh, actually it did work. Okay, so it's telling me the CMOS reset, press enter. So that's good. We fixed it. All right, so let's pop these back in. The guy was uh, saying, he looked around online. He was gonna actually replace the, the screen or the cable and I told him sometimes it comes loose, so or sometimes it's corroded. So if you want, you can remove the battery. You can wipe, uh, make sure you press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds, wipe off this connector, put it back, and then you can try it again. But most of the time it's in the screen side because this one, it has all this slack holding it down. Usually what happens is when you open and close it, it pulls this wire. Or when you carry it in your bag, um, when you squeeze here, it flexes the screen and that causes it to pull the cable. So actually the way you want to carry your computer is from this side. And if you put it in a bag, get like a big book or something. So when it pushes on it, it pushes on the whole thing, not just like on a small area. Okay. So now the kind of difficult part, we got to put back the keyboard, the trackpad and all this stuff. Okay. So tilt it forward like this. Make sure the latches are up. Okay. And then, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this, but basically you just plug them back in and then put the latch back down. So I don't know if I can show this because I have to hold it at this. Oh, I guess you can kind of see. Okay, so hopefully you can see it, but get that cable back in. Push the latch back down. Oh, I'm running out of room for my hand. Okay. Same thing with this cable. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Get it back in. All right, put the latch back down. All right, trackpad, same thing. Get the cable back in. And then put the latch back down. And then what you want to do, you can actually test it before you finish. So turn the computer back on. All right, if it has that BIOS message, press the enter key. Make sure it turns on okay. Hopefully the screen is still going to work. Right now it's just staying black. Come on, come on. Okay, now it's showing the HP and it's showing the startup, so we're good. Looks like the screen is working. <sighs> Did you, what? I guess the person's contacting me asking if I figured it out. So the screen is working. I just have to now test the keyboard and mouse and everything and then you just snap all the clips back in snap all the clips back in and put back all the screws oh I forgot to put back the battery screws so hopefully that part is simple enough for you guys to figure out I don't know if I'm gonna record that part let me I'll try and do what I can okay actually give me a bit I'm getting some messages I'll be back all right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I just tested it. Everything seems to be working, um, but I'm going to have to take this out again because I forgot to put back the screws for the battery. So again, we're just going to pop these connectors out. All right. This one goes up towards yourself. All right. And then you can push the cable out. Same thing with the backlight cable. Pull the, the connector or the tab up towards yourself. Come on. 
got to get, wait, did I, okay. Sorry, it's hard to see. All right, there we go. And then this one, the last one for the trackpad, you push it away instead of pulling it up. So let me actually give you a closer up view of that. I didn't show that. So here you can see this tab flips up, okay, like this. This one goes up like that, and then this one goes up from this side. And you want to be careful with those tabs. I've had a lot of people, they said like they broke them. So just be careful when removing those. Okay, I'm going to take this cable back out. All right, and we're going to put back all the battery screws for at the top. These are using PH or JIS1 screwdriver. Okay. Make sure you use the right screwdriver because if you use the one that's too small, you can actually strip the screws or damage them. And if you do that, then you're going to have a tough time um, getting out the screws ever. You're going to need a special tool to do that. All right, so, or you're going to have to like drill them out or something. All right, anyways, put back the three screws at the bottom. <clears throat> Just like that. That, flip that tab down all right and now we're gonna put this keyboard back on again right make sure you reconnected all the cables because once you put this down it's gonna be tough to open it again all right so same thing I did the keyboard first I just used my fingers to kind of guide it but this is kind of difficult to replace these cables so just keep that in mind if you're doing this it's going to be tough to replace it okay and you don't want to um, try and take the screen out to tighten the cable if you didn't disconnect the battery or you can completely fry the computer okay all right or at, at the least you can fry the um, keep the backlight circuit okay all right so keyboard cable in I don't think I don't know if you can see but okay just like that make sure it goes in all the way it's hard to do this at this angle I need to tilt it towards myself more so sorry if you can't see but you get the point just put the cable in put the tab down same thing with the backlight one okay put the cable in push the tab down all right now we've got the trackpad one Put the cable in. Oops, make sure the tab is up. It fell back down. Okay, and then push the tab back down. All right, and then again, I recommend testing it. So the magnet actually holds it to the screen, so it makes it a little bit easier that you don't have to hold the thing up. And then, yeah, you want to test and make sure that the um, keyboard, the trackpad, and the keyboard backlight is all working. <clears throat> I can't tell the keyboard trackpad. I think I have to sign in, but I don't know the customer's password. So I'm going to leave that. But you can see the screen is... Oops, it's too dim. Let me see if I can brighten it. Okay, so the brightness key worked. You can actually see the screen is on right now. Okay, all right. There we go, and I'm going to check the tab key is working, the mouse is working, and the touch screen is working, so that's good. Only thing I can't tell is, oh, okay, the keyboard backlight works, I just had to press that key, and then it actually lights up. I don't know if you can see it because the flash is on, oh yeah, there you go, you can see the lights. Okay, so there we go, it looks like it's good to go. I'm going to just pop everything back together, and then we're good so when you pop this thing back together make sure your computer's completely off because if it's on and the hard drive spinning the clip like the sudden snap shock of the clips can actually mess up your hard drive so make sure shut it down completely let it power off <clears throat> make sure the light on the side goes completely off so right now the light on here is on so you want to make sure that that light goes completely off before you start snapping it all back together Okay, so it's off now. All right, now you can start just squeezing the layers together. Okay. Clip all the back clips in as well. All right. 
oops, that rubber piece got trapped under there, so I'm going to have to pop that back out. Make sure that you get those rubber pieces in right as well. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to move that rubber piece back. Oops, sorry. This rubber piece came out, so I just pushed it back out. There we go. All right. Snap it all back in. There we go. Make sure the four rubber pieces are good. Flip that over. Check the other side. Looks good. All right. There we go. Snap in the center. <clears throat> And then put back the screws, pH 1 along the top or the back near the hinges, and then pH 0 along the bottom here. Okay, so just put those screws back. Again, they were missing one of the rubber pieces, so I don't know what they did with it. I don't know, HP always has these things, they just fall apart. And here we go, I actually broke, these are my pry tools, so broke one. Alright, that's why it's nice having fingernails. If they break, you have multiple replacements on hand <laughs> at all times. I have my pry tools on hand at all times. That's a good one. All right. So we got all the screws back in. Now we just need to put the rubber pieces back on. Okay. I like to look at the bottom of the adhesive and see where it has the indentation of the mark so I can put it back the same direction. Okay. And then we put the last piece. And that's all there is to it. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.